Hey guys, Gas TV here with another Path of Exile build guide, or whatever you want to call this. Uh, this is Bex, Community Mage, Made, Mage, Mage, Made, Unique Maw of Mischief. And uh, we decided to make a build out of it, and it's been pretty cool. I decided to scale burning with it, so we're using combustion, burning damage, fire penetration, and ignite proliferation. Problem though is that I feel that the hit damage is just so much better, but the way the build works is that it takes 13% of the minion's HP as a baseline damage on the hit. And I think that it's better to scale hit with it, but it's kind of so-so. But yeah, it makes all your minions aggressive. There's a few problems with this, because what it does is that you summon minions, and then you hold down this channeling ability, but if you tap, it's just gonna explode one of them, like this. And if you hold it down, you can blow them all up, and they do a lot of damage. There's a couple of things you can do with this build, because the, the Death Wish approach makes the enemies hit 40% increased cast speed, movement speed, and uh, attack speed, which is pretty cool. It can affect up to 13 minions, and um, for each minion affected, the uh, damage with the hits and ailments uh, per affected minion is increased by 10% more. So that's pretty cool. When you're using Herald of Purity, with the approach that I have, obviously a POB will be in the descriptions below, we can get the minions up to about 190, 200,000 life, which means that they have a base DPS of the Death Wish per minion, plus the 10% more, uh, having a baseline damage of 26,000, which is pretty crazy. Skeletus, however, in this build has 25,000 life. So there's a few things you need to think about to make this build less clunky. And that is obviously that you want to make sure you have medium movement speed. So I've crafted medium movement speed on my rings. Didn't have room on the amulet. I have minion speed and we have minion life for HP. And we have empower for more HP on level 3 though. An elemental army, which does indicate that I want some extra fire damage uh, for my minions so they can proc elemental army for more exposure on the enemies. So that's basically how we've designed the approach of the skeletons and my hop minions to do the damage. Preferably, you want to start off a kill by popping skeletons and killing them and spawn your Herald of Purity minions. And then you want to roll as far as you can on your Herald of Purity minions because they, they have more HP, you'll deal more damage. Problem uh, with this is that they don't always follow you. So sometimes you have to cast a couple skeletons, which would be less damage. But for clearing, that's not really a problem. Single target is fine-ish, if you will. The build was able to do A8 series or with a couple of uh, miss, uh, misses on the last phase. I've been able to kill all the conquerors without any major problems, so that has been pretty chill. So there's a couple of big problems with this. I'll show you a clearing map here in a second, and there's gonna be some boss kill footage here in the video as well. So the problem is that your minions have to go on the, on the enemies. So if an enemy is here on these syndicate operative corpses, and there's a boss here, and I summon skeletons right here, and there's a pack of enemies here. For some reason, before the boss is attackable, sometimes they would just dash away, even if the enemy spawns at the same time as the boss, or like for a sorrow, the minions would then run to the other targets. When I'm holding down my death wish and explode them, I want the explosion here on the boss, but they had already run off here and started exploding on the packs, which forced me to summon new minions and hold it down again before I could do damage on the boss, which was really, really frustrating. Another quick thing to mention is that you can't really use other minions uh, that you don't want to explode. Uh, my original plan was to use a Harbinger through, through Torrent's Reclamation because of the life recovery, cast speed, cooldown recovery, all these things, and the Tailwind buff that you'll see here. Well, not a Tailwind buff, but a Torrent Reclamation buff here, which is really good with 20% of its action speed. The problem is, you can blow it up. <laughs> You can literally blow up your Harbinger. So he's useless. So fuck that belt. <laughs> so we're using uh, Darkness and Throne instead. So you can't use any other minions except minions you want to explode. So this belt was completely useless. So I'm going to show you some clearing and I'll explain some of the other issues with this build. But before that, I uh, might as well finish the gearing. We're using Spore Guard for some extra explosions and we were able to uh, get another anointment, which I took to be Cleanse Thoughts. I took Command of Steel because I wanted to get the defensive up because of this build not having reliable consistent hits on enemies, leeching was kind of out of the question. Otherwise, I would have looked into something like a Soul Tether or Glorious Vanity Awana with um, Immortal Ambition, which is basically how we're playing the Dark Pack build. Is the build is very similar to Dark Pack. They're scaling the HP of the minions to do damage. In this case, it's fire exploding your minions, whereas the Dark Pack is taking away HP from your skeletons to do chaos damage. Uh, so Cleanse Thoughts, what that does is doubling your chaos resistance. And the reason we're doing that is because we picked up a glorious vanity of Shibaka to get Divine Flesh, allowing us to get a big chunk of defensive mechanism or layer versus elemental damage as 50% of all elemental damage goes on our chaos resistance. However, 
it forces us to get 80% Chaos Rest. Cleanse Thoughts doubles our Chaos Rest, which is over here. Doubling our Chaos Rest, maybe making that a lot easier to get in terms of budget. We don't have to think about the Elemental Resistances as much. Command of Steel is down here, which is basically just damage per chance to block. I am using two ones, but as we know, having Bone Offering in a Trigger Weapon allows me with the Mistress of Sacrifice, those two points here, and a Rumi's Concoction and Glancing Blows is able, able to get a block cap, which you can see here in a second. If I just blow some corpses up, you can see I have 75% chance of block and 70% spell block because of the rolls not being perfect. So that's perfectly fine. And the Command of Steel is giving me damage based on my attack block, not my spell block. Gloves can have minion life, can also get the unnerved to make enemies take more damage. Uh, glove boots are just movement speed and resistance and attributes. The trigger weapon is crucial to get the automation of your offerings when you're doing this as a necromancer. In my case, I have Armageddon Brand to proc out the elemental overload from the tree. I have Desecrate and then a Bone Offering. And my second one has the Flame Dash of Fast Casting and uh, Arcane Surge for the Arcane Surge procs. And that's about it. It's very straightforward. The RS we're using is a Vitality and Clarity, which I try to keep at a rather low level so I can still afford casting my spell. We have a Cast damage Taking Immortal Call set up, a portal for lols. So I have two sockets open, I don't really know what to do with them. And that's basically the entire build. However, I do feel that it might be better to not do the burn Burning strat. But I'm going to show you a map now and I'll explain some of the issues we've been having with this build. Right, so when you're starting off a map, right, you want to find a pack like this one here. I'll spawn skeletons on it and then I'll blow them up. Now that I've blown them up, as you can see here on the yellow target here, I have four Herald of Purity minions. They're dealing decent damage without actually scaling it. So every time I do a killing blow, they will then spawn themselves. So all I have to do is blow up my Herald of Purity minions without summoning skeletons. Now obviously, that it comes with a prerequisite of them actually being on top of your enemies. Which means that you might have to summon skeletons sometimes to hit the proper targets. For the most part, it's been pretty fine though. However, the problem is when there's a, a pack of enemies that are not... Um, that you want to target, but your minions are off to another target, causing a lot of issues. And that's frustrating because your defensive stats is basically blocking and the um, Chaos Resistance from the Divine Flesh, and that's basically how you survive. So here's a great example of these minions. If I spawn the boss you know, I attack him, I put skeletons on him, I charge him. You see how most of my minions went over to the pack, instead of staying on the boss like I wanted to. That means less damage to the boss, and they kill this pack instead, which is frustrating. Obviously I could kill this pack and then go for the boss, but some bosses will be kind of frustrating with this. And since so we do more damage with... Um, with um, more minions, we have all summer skeletons, and this can happen because your defense is so bad, and the only defense you really have versus bosses is surrounding the enemies with a lot of skeletons. So in this case, he was surrounded till he leap slapped me. Now, obviously, I could have moved. I just want to show you guys how bad that can be. So what I would have to do to do damage here is I would have to hold down my channeling ability to do all the damage to all my minions surrounding, preferably hitting the Herald of Purity minion. However, if I don't, then I'll do less damage, and if he's using any uh, uh, distance attacks or any sort of uh, leap slam like he did that there, anything that can hit me, then I am in a very bad spot and can actually die quite easily, despite the defensive layers that we have. Other than that, it's it's actually felt, uh, it's actually been pretty fine to play. So now we got Herald of Purity minions, and as you can see, the chunks from the minions exploding when I hit Herald of Purity minions is very noticeable compared to the damage I get when they have all the skeletons. But as you saw in the start uh, of this fight, Ignite is barely noticeable. So based on that, the, the more minions you have, you have this pseudo shotgun effect, which the Dark Pact is having as well, where each minion is hitting the enemies with a unique uh, hit, if you will. Same thing with Dark Pact with chaining on skeletons. Every every hit you do with, um, with the Dark Pact from one cast, every chain uh, hit can actually hit the same target. And that's uh, one of the cool things about it, which means that you're pretty much shotgunning the more minions you have on top of a boss, which is why we use Valsam Skeletons, because even if you do doing less damage, instead of hitting four times on your Herald of Purities, which you can bring up with, you know, some Helmet Enchant, of course, um, you're still in a position where with Valsam Skeletons you get 13 hits instead, which would be better even if you hit the incorrect minions on your channeling. Oh, that was soft. So here's another example of me not having minions around me, causing me to be uh, in a bad position of something actually attacking me. So this has been a, a reoccurring problem with this build in general, 
where my minions are not taking up the aggro, which is basically the biggest defensive source. Obviously, I don't have minions that taunt and hit, which would help a lot. But in general, it's um, it's clunky. That's that's where I want to get at. It's super clunky because I have to be stationary to get my damage out, and being stationary is not always the best come, option, obviously. Come, come, come. And uh, despite that, our minions, are, even with taunt, are not always taking up all the enemies, putting us in a disadvantageous uh, situation where the enemies are hitting us instead. Obviously, uh, with the gear that I've shown you, we have quite shit gear, and the jewels like I showed you, for example, this one, is among the better jewels that I have. I want the, a little bit of fire damage for a minion, so they can proc elemental army for exposure, and I want the minion damage when I use the minion skill recently, but most importantly, I want the minion life, because that increases the base DPS, or the base damage that my build is doing. However, I don't even have a life roll on this one. This one, still no life roll, but at least I have minion life, and more fire, which is not really needed at that point. A jewel like this is uh, just flat HP, and uh, minions fire, don't need more than that, but I don't have anything that actually gives me more damage than this one. Uh, a jewel up here gives me HP and everything else is useless. And this is probably the best jewel I have because it's been your life. I get some rest and I also get some HP. I did actually pick up a corrupting jewel because I did go with three unique flasks. I only have a warding and a heat. So we went with a corrupted blood that can be inflicted on your jewel to make uh, make us not care about that part of it. Thanks so much, Wrestle Cool, for the sub. I appreciate it. Um, so that's basically it. So when it comes to the jewel, since I went for the ignite route, I needed to make sure that I have enough chance to ignite versus bosses because bosses have reduced curse effectiveness reduction when it comes to hex curses such as flammability. I need to make sure that I had 100% chance to ignite. So my one of my medium clusters went for cooked alive 15% ignite and ignite steals 15% uh, damage faster with from blowback. My idea was to get small clusters to get more HP because it's really low at the moment. However, the best jewel you can have for medium clusters is the same jewel we use in the Dark Pact, which is Blessed Rebirth as well as Hulking Corpses, because these two nodes gives a ton of minion life, which is very, very good for this type of build. And I went for the large cluster with uh, fire damage to get myself widespread for area of effect and elemental damage, Lord of Draught for flammability curse effect, which I don't think is that good, to be honest, and Burning Bright for fire damage over time multiplier, area and fire damage, which is actually very good. So I'd say the Burning Bright is the best one. This jewel was somewhat expensive. I think that if you can just focus on Burning Bright and getting an 8th passive, and whichever node you can find for a cheap approach that will give you damage would be better. And I also believe that skipping the approach of using Ignite as the focus would help the build quite a lot in terms of single target because your damage doesn't seem to come from the Ignites themselves and more for the damage output. A tree is very generic. Just going for life, getting new levels, uh, more minion HP from Bone Barrier, uh, miss your sacrifice for the obvious reasons. I went up to Breath of Flame for Ignite. Again, I think it would be better to go for hits. And just HP, Elemental Overload, some Dexterity was needed, more Ignitions, the Cluster Jewel setup, more minion life, HP, Ignite recent for me to go hold a minion, picking up Spiritual Aid so I get the benefits of the actual minion damage I get from the Necromancer Ascendancy, and Glancing Blows for defense, and obviously Divine Flush to bump my defense up. So if you play this more uh, actively, it's it's okay to play. I mean, it's dealing with the bosses. It's not too expensive to get going. I just feel that there are so many issues with the behavior of the AI for this build to function at a comfortable state. And uh, the HP difference between Herald of Purity and Skeletons was kind of significant, which also uh, causes a lot of issues. And since you can't have any other backup minions that will save you by taunting and being as a frontliner for you, because any minion you summon will explode, such as Animate Guardian, Harbinger, Zombies, whatever, right? So you can't really have any other defensive layer except for that, and because of the way the ability works, you're not able to get any leech. So needless to say, I will not be making a forum guide for this, but I would like to hear you guys' opinions in the comments below. If you guys have played this build, let me know how that worked out, and if you did it differently than I did. And, um, yeah. It's been fun to play. I like I like the idea of the helmet. I just feel that the AI from um, the way the build's played is just not suitable for effective gameplay. But it's been fun to play with. So as always, boys, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and until next time, stay safe, keep rocking.